Welcome back, Fish on Northwest. We are here in the Bait Lab for this week's How To. Bait Lab presentation is brought to you by Max Lure and, of course, Sportco. Check out everything that we often present here at uh, sportco.com. So, um, lots of options when you're targeting resident coho. Now, today is the official Chinook opener, Area 9, Area 10, and so we're actually able to go and target Chinook, but you're allowed to keep one Chinook, and after that, you're going after coho. And right now, still, this time of year, we don't have a lot of ocean migrant uh, coho showing up in Puget Sound. So we are truly targeting those resident coho. And our buddy Matt was on the uh, phone earlier. He gave us some uh, parameters of finding fish anywhere from 35 to 111 foot uh, deep. And would be the case historically, last few years I've been up and around that area looking for fish. I'm finding them, you know, 30, 35, 50 feet, maybe 70, but we are in the upper water column. And because of that, a couple years ago, we started actually fishing uh, kokanee rods for our resident coho. A lot of these fish can be three to five pounds and on a kokanee rod like this uh, uh, HSR uh, it's about an eight foot rod but you know this thing's rated this edge rod is rated at a six to fifteen it'll get it done all day long for for resin coho and will actually do okay if you you know hook upwards of a ten pound chinook for example they have done it they work fine um, like to spool it up with at least 30 pound braid, put a 25 pound top shot on there, and then meter it down in your presentation. You're gonna break that down to about a 20 pound. And the only reason I do that, you know, using 20 pound fluorocarbon is on this smaller presentation, is in fact, if you do hook a Chinook, you wanna to try to get that fish in in an ample amount of time if you can't retain it. So, um, you don't have to go with the kokanee rods for your presentation. You can stay with your 1065s and your 10 and a half foot rods, downrigger fishing. If you do get that Chinook, you're, you're geared up to handle it. Um, if you want to scale it down and enjoy what these uh, resin coho can offer to you, that's why we do it. And it's a heck of a lot of fun. So in doing that, I'll also pare down my presentation. You see on the table here, we got a variety of different flashers and yes, dodgers. A lot of people forget that uh, you know the dodger works uh, pretty darn well even in the salt water in attractability and in the presentation and how it uh, uh, draws those uh, smaller coho in so what do we got on the table here? Well, yeah, we can use our 11 inch uh, flashers and a lot of us do, um, even when we're targeting resident coho, that is uh, a go-to that a lot of folks will stick with, nothing wrong with that. One thing I'm kind of partial to is now switching to the Brad's New Revolutionary 360. This is a breakaway flasher and uh, it's a 10 inch flasher and it's extremely light. And I would put this on my coconut rod to go after resident coho. Um, if you're thinking about, well, if I bring that gear up without a fish releasing that flasher and I'm using a coconut rod, I'm gonna have to drag that flasher through the water. It's not really that difficult. If you're thinking lure change or adding sand or checking for weeds or whatever it is to bring your gear up, just let the downrigger bring it up. Bring it up to the surface on clip, you reel it in, you're only fishing 30 or 40 feet behind the boat. So to have this 10 inch flasher on your coconut rod is not that big a deal and it'll handle it just fine. You can scale it down even more. Some of the things I've done in the past, I like to run the eight inch uh, 360 flashers. Those work really well and um, you know, Max Lure makes uh, an eight inch dodger. Put a little bend in that dodger right here. And um, boy, you wanna talk about some back and forth action. This thing will really get wagon, whatever it is you're dragging behind it. You can drop down to the six inch. I prefer the eight inch size. Uh, we wanna have plenty of attractability. And especially if we're fishing shallower than deeper. If we're up in that 50 foot or higher and we get a lot of sun filtration through the water, these size of uh, attractors work very well. So I'll stick with these eight inch, I'll go with the Dodgers. You can go with the sling blade though. I didn't have any of the nine inch. I would prefer to use the nine inch sling blade um, versus the six. I'm also gonna make sure I put uh, some type of scent or attractant on my Dodgers. I like that extra scent in the water. And for me, this time of year, tuna is always a good choice, but you know, we're looking at what is in the water that these small uh, coho are going after. And predominantly right now, they're feeding on a lot of krill and they're switching over to herring. Our herring in the sound right now, typically as we get to the front edge of summer is two to three inches from the spring hatch. And you'll see a lot of them out there in your marinas and stuff. You look around the docks, you see those, those small bait balls, those herring balls swimming in the marinas. They're two to three inches. And that is why I started changing up the size of my presentation when I'm targeting coho in the upper water column, not dropping down deep, going after kings. Again, that's why I've lightened up my gear and go with smaller presentations. So some things that I like to use, 
We mentioned it before for the sockeye, the Brad's cut plugs, the mini cut plug, and the kokanee cut plug, fantastic size lures for resin and coho. They do very well. Seahawk color, color gets it done. Hot melon is another one that gets it done. These uh, flat out perform. Stuff them with tuna or put some uh, fire gel, Potsky's fire gel on the belly of these things and fish them behind your Dodgers, behind your uh, flashers. If you're going behind a flasher, I run those at 32 inches. I like a lot of whip, a lot of spin, lots of action. If I'm going to put it behind a Dodger, I'm going to shorten that up to even about 24 inches because I really want that thing whipping back and forth as it's spinning. A 24 inch uh, leader behind a Dodger is perfectly acceptable. It works great. If I'm behind a flasher, which is rotating 360, I'm going to go with about a 32 to 34 inch leader. Um, some other options, uh, spoons, obviously silver hoard. Uh, Kingfisher spoons, uh, the number two is two inch spoon. Notice I got the pink pearl and I got the herring aid. Why? Pink pearl and herring aid matching the krill, matching the small herring. And on these pink spoons in this pink glow, I'll put on a little UV hoochie, little tail wagger, just to extend out the presentation, has a little more action on there. Again, we're trying to mimic some of the krill and the balls of krill that are in the water. So any type of additional action I can get on that spoon uh, seems to produce pretty well. I will put my scent right on the backs of these spoons as well. I'll put some krill scent on these pink spoons. I'll put my herring, my fire gel herring, right on the backs of these spoons. And don't be afraid to even put a little dab of anise on there. Those fish really seem to respond to anise. So. One of the bigger changes I've done is I've incorporated some of our silver hoard, um, different types of uh, ace high flies, different sizes, and I've incorporated those with the Max Lure Smile Blade, and for good reason. So here's your standard ace high fly, the full size. I don't typically use those for my resin coho. Again, I like to scale it down a little bit. Here's your needlefish. Uh, it has the same size head as your Ace High Fly Junior, but you're going to see the profile as far as length of bait is substantially different. I like to use the herring aid pattern. I like to use this pink with glow. Again, I'm trying to replicate the small herring in the sound and the krill. Okay, these colors tend to seem to be very consistent in, in how they perform. And so I've stuck with them for the last couple years because they just keep getting it done. So over here you can see what I've done with some of these lures. Now this is an ace high fly needle fish and the nice thing is you can cut that back to whatever size bait you want. So I left that one at about three inches, cut it off just a little bit to make it a smaller presentation. On top of that I put a bead and this one has a um, a purple haze 1.1 smile blade okay that smile blade on the front of that thing along with it wagon behind a dodger or a flasher in rotating that smile blade gives a, an extra element of attractability flash and uh, uv so this small pink uh, ace high fly junior i've put on the pink 0 0.08 which has worked fantastic i don't know what it is just in combination with that smile blade. It's basically like an oversized kokanee lure is, is, is all we've built here out of these ace high flies. This one here is the needlefish and I've cut it to about you know three inches or so to replicate that herring. If that herring in the sound is at three inches or so and I put this UV burst glow smile blade on there. Now what that does is as that oscillates back and forth and moves around and it captures sunlight and gives that uh, infrequent flash, because again, nothing in nature swims or walks in straight lines, right? So those fish are moving all the time. One thing I noticed years ago is when I was standing in a marina and there's a ball of small herring coming through uh, around the docks. And as they're swimming and you see them, they're green and black, every so often there's always one or you know multiple ones that are pitching onto their side. And when they pitch to their side, they give off a nice flash and they reflect off the sunlight. So as you watch that bait working through the marina and you see all that dark green and black and then that periodic flash, I thought, oh, I'm gonna put that glow burst smile blade in front of that herring aid and I'm gonna go after resident coho. And for whatever reason, I don't know what it is. Um, they're not telling me exactly other than the results. This thing flat out puts resin coho in the boat. I'm not worried about encounter rate on sublegals. If I find I'm having a day where I'm getting too many sublegals, I'm going to go to bigger presentation, obviously. But I am going to start off with this smaller presentation, 35 feet down, 50 feet down, upwards of 70 feet down. Find where my electronics are. Let me know there are fish. And I'm going to target 
those uh, those resident coho, those smaller coho with a smaller presentation, almost uh, albeit a kokanee presentation style with small blades and uh, small hoochie presentation. Another one that works really well is this double rig that I've uh, put together. This is a herring aid um, sardine size two inch um, uh, hoochie and I put that over the top of a glow sardine two inch hoochie so now you have uv you have herring aid uh, color contrast you have glow and on top of that i put the 1.1 max smile blade in the glow burst uv and that one there really gets it done especially on cloudy days where we need a little more light in the water a little more uv presentation a little more glow we all know that UV and GLOW in combination Puget Sound gets results. That one right there with the UV and uh, GLOW inserted skirt will get it done time and time again. So just some options, just some things to think about. An alternative when you're going after the resident coho specifically in Puget Sound, these are some options I like to use.